Hi, this is Jackie from the Build Little team. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the dashboard overview for your help desk. Now, right here, we're currently open on Web Agency. But if you click on Change Company, you can go and choose the company which you want to look at. So I'm just going to choose the Web Agency again. And this is the dashboard. So you can see that we've currently got two open chats. This is the chat that's in progress. How many open tickets, how many tickets is in progress, and how many attendance is currently live. If you scroll down, you're going to get a chart of the tickets happening and the chat happening. You will also be able to view it in month and year. And this gives you a little bit more information on the closed chats and the closed tickets. And this obviously is going to populate and changes as time goes by and depending on how many people is active. And that's very straightforward. I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial and I'll see you in another. Hi, this is Jackie from the Build Little team. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the chats and tickets overview. But before we start, it's always important to make sure that you're looking at the right company. For an example, we are busy with web agency here. You can change your company right there. But here on the left hand side, you will see this little icon like look like earphones. You're going to click on that. The first icon is for chat. The next one is for tickets. And the other one below this one is going to be for the filter. And that is just home. So let's go and click on the chat first. And this is where you will be seeing exactly what has been happening on your chat. So you can say that we've got two open tickets here already for today. There is nobody that's interacting with these tickets or no attendees has been a progress to it. Because you can see it shows it's in queue, been waiting. If it was in progress, you would have a number next to it there as well as finished and tickets that has been lost. Uh, lost is basically when somebody has clicked the, the exit button. So these are the different kinds of options on the left hand side. Here at the top, you can also see in which departments it is active. So you would be able to filter it according to that. So let's just click on the first one here at the top. Here, when you click on that specific um, chat, you will see on the left hand side exactly what's happening there. It shows you the chat information, the chat that's been created, and which department, the time, as well as some history of the client that you're going to see right there. And you guys just can see that right there, it's still in queue. If I click on it, this is where you would be able to see it in action. So I'm just going to click on close. If I go back to this icon and click on tickets, it's going to be exactly the same type of thing. You're going to have an area that shows if there was any open tickets, any tickets that's been in progress, any overdue, once that's been finalized, once that's been canceled, and then all the tickets that this specific attendee has done. And that will be seen right there. You can also create a new ticket right from this area. Let's say that it was a chat that was happening in another area and you want to create a ticket for it because you cannot solve the problem. This is where it's going to happen. And that is basically that area. When I go back and I go to the filter area, if you would like to look for a specific client, maybe there's lots of tickets and chats going on. You are looking for something very specific. You would be able to do it going by tab type as well as the status that is happening. It could be maybe be in progress, the department, a further search function by name, ID, description, email and operator, the date, and you can filter it accordingly. And that's basically an overview of the help desk. Um, ticket and chat and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in another. Hi, this is Jackie from the Build Little team. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started with Help Desk. Now in this training, I will register a company, but it's important to already have your website ready as you will need to connect your Help Desk to your website. So right here on the dashboard, I've already typed in a name because the website that I've created is a web agency. So I'm just putting the name of my company right here, which is web agency and then a logo. Now for the logo, you need to add a link. Now, if you wonder how to add a link, it's quite easy. Probably you would have your logo on your website. So I'm going to show you how that's done. If I go to my website, you can see here is the logo that I've added. All you really need to do is to right click on that image and say copy image address. And then you're going to go back to the help desk, paste in the address. And that is how simple it is. Now for the description, we need to give a proper description. 
we can say best web agency in Europe and you give a proper description about it and then is there any domain missing add it so obviously we need to go and add our domain so I'm going to go back to my website I'm going to copy my domain and then I'm going to drop it in right there and I'm going to click add now you can see it's been added here I'm just going to take the one at the top away because I'm not using that one so that is all that you need to do and then you're going to click save You can see the message was that the company was created successfully. Now it says copy the script below and add it to the script section of your website, which is very important. So we're going to copy that. It says successfully copied. We're going to go back to our website. And on the left hand side where it says script settings, you're going to click there. And right there, we're going to paste it in. And we're going to click save. Now that has been added. Now, what I always like to do, even if it's saved, I always republish. So let's go back to Help Desk and we're going to say OK. And that is how you register a company. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in another. Hi, this is Jackie from the Builderall team. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure your company. Here on my dashboard, you will need to click on Change Company. Then we're going to go to the company that you want to work with. And in this case, we are busy with a web agency. We're going to click on this little configuration icon. And then at the top of the page, you'll see Configuration. Click on that. Now you will have three tabs. Now the first one is General. Here you will be able to disable the chat and the ticket system while you are still creating your, well, your help desk. And maybe you do not want it to be active on your site yet. But please note that if you already added the code to your script settings, the icons will already be on your site. So if someone visits your site, they will be able to click on the icons and register, but nothing will show up for them because you have disabled them. So when it is gray like this, it means that the chat is activated and people will be able to create tickets and so forth. If you slide it to the right, it turns green and that means that you disable the chat. So I'm going to leave mine because I want it to be active. Then I'm going to go to chat. Now here you can decide how many chats a customer can open simultaneously on your site. Note that if it is on zero, there is a message. Then you have deactivated the limit in this example. I'm going to just leave it on one because I'd like to have only one open at a time. The next tab is tickets. It works exactly the same as to chat, but I am going to allow the customer to have more than one ticket open. So I'll just make a plus. So after you've made all these changes, all you need to do is to click on save. And that is how you configure a company. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in another. Hi, this is Jackie from the Build It All team. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to edit an existing company in Help Desk. Now, right here on my dashboard, you can see I'm on the home button, the top button on Help Desk. Right here at the bottom, it shows change company. If you click on change company, it's going to list all the companies that you have created. So here is the web agency that we've created. Now to edit this or change it, you're just going to click on that configuration button and it will give you the option to edit. So here you can change the name, you can change the logo, as well as the description. Once you've done that, all you need to do is click on save, and then you will get the success message at the bottom. And that's all there is to it to change an existing company. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you in another. Hi, this is Jackie from the Builderall team. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to register a new department. Now here on the dashboard, you will need to make sure that the company that you want to work with shows at the top. If it does not, you need to go click on change company and then click on home to get back to the screen. Now you're right here on the left hand side, you will need to click on the three or four little blocks icon. It will take you to your department dashboard. 
And here we can see an overview of everything that is happening within the departments. You can also click on the drop down list right here at the top. And you would be able to choose a specific department if you have more than one. Now you can also choose to register a department by clicking on the blue button. Or you can click on list of departments where you will see all your departments and have the option to register another. Now in this example, I'm going to click on the list of departments as it will take us to the same screen when we already register a new department anyways. So as you can see, we already have a department created. So let's go and create another. Let's click on register new department and we're going to give it a name. So let's say that this is the sales department. Department. And we're going to click save. And now you've created that department. So if we go back to these four little dots and we click on list departments, you can see that our department has been created. And that is how you create a department. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in another. Hi, this is Jackie from the Builderall team. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure a department. First, you need to make sure that you have the right company here at the top that you want to work, work with by just looking underneath this home button. If it's not the correct company, just click on change company. You will then need to go to the left hand side, go to these four little blocks here, then click on that so that we can see the department dashboard. Right here, we're going to click on list departments. Now, as you can see, we have two departments here. If you want to edit a department, you just need to click on the pencil. You can also disable the department by moving the slider to gray, or you can delete it. So I'm just going to click the general support and click the delete so that you can see what it looks like. And I'm going to click OK. Now we are going to edit the sales department by clicking on this pencil. So let's click on it. And you can see that it shows sales and it just shows description of the details that you want to change if you want to. If not, we can go back and we are going to click on the configuration. So on the configuration, we've got multiple tabs right here. So let's start with the general area. Now for the language purposes, if you're going to have all, it means it's going to be for all languages. But in this case, I'm going to click the drop down and I'm just going to choose English. Then I'm going to scroll down and you would be able to choose the time zone that you are operating in as well as the module. Now the module is whether this department will have chat or ticket or both of them. So you can choose which one is enabled for this specific department. So I'm just going to click on all and then I'm going to go to manage assistance. Now it's important to remember that you will not be able to add attendance to your department if you have not yet created the dependent uh, attendance. And that can be done by this little icon here on the left. So I'm going to pause the video for a moment. I'm going to go create an attendant so that you can see what the screen look like. And then in another video, I will show you how to set up that attendant. So right here, I've added an attendant and you can see the person sitting here. There could be lots of attendants. And then the only way to add, add it to your specific department is by clicking on the plus sign. And you can also remove them from that specific department by clicking on the minus and it's going to put them back under all attendants. So it doesn't matter how many attendants you have, you can add multiple attendants to the specific department. So now we've done that, we're going to go over to shortcut text. Shortcut text is more for your uh, attendance that is going to help your clients. And you would be able to create your own command right here at the top by creating the command and click on add. Or you can use the custom ones and just edit them. So if I click on that edit button, you will see that the command is sitting there, the status that you can choose, as well as the description area. So I'm just going to go back to manage assistance and then shortcut. So you can see we've got all these different ones that you can go play around with. If there's something that you don't like, you can just click on it, um, the trash can. So let's go to limitations. Here we have quite a lot of different things that you can do. It's all about chat waiting time, chat by attendant, ticket by attendant, inactivity messages, and time ticket to become late. So you can increase and decrease the minute time 
for each of every one of these, depending on what type of department you have, and you can increase and decrease. You can see I've got one here that says inactivity message after how many messages or minutes, and it shows 30. So you can set this up according to your sales department. And then we're going to click on evaluation. Under the evaluation tab is where your customers can evaluate the attendant that helped them. And that is with regards to the service, the comment rating. So if you click on these little check marks, it will give you a little bit more information with regards to that. And you can choose to enable or disable that for your site. If I go to chat, the chat area right here, now you have to think about it. Chat is when it happens live. Ticket is something that somebody process and then the attendant will attend to it later. So this is the live chat that's happening. Now it says show queue. This is a very nice function, especially if you've got lots and lots of people that comes into your uh, chat section. It will tell them how many or how far they are inside of your queue. And then the open chat is checked. The customer can open a chat in that specific department. And then you can edit your opening message. You can also do your closing message. And this is where you are going to add additional questions if you want to ask them prior to the chat happening. So if we do that and I click on register question, this is now a sales department. We already collected uh, the email address from them when they registered. Maybe you want to collect a cell phone number for an example, because some, sometimes the, the chat could bomb out or they've got a disabled internet connection or whatever the case might be. So this could be a question to the customer. We can say something like, please give us your telephone or rather say contact number just in case the chat closes. Closes so we can get back to you. Something like that. And then select the answer type is only text at the moment. And is it mandatory? Do you want them or force them to give the information or not? So in this case, I am not going to do that. I'm just going to say OK. And then you can see that your question has been registered and that is active. You can deactivate it. If it was mandatory, mandatory, it would have had a tick mark next to it. So let's scroll a little bit further. You can add multiple questions. I'm just going to leave one for training purposes. Right here is your opening hours of your chat. Depending on the type of business that you are running, you can choose which ones need to be enabled. So in this case, I'm going to say that this specific one for Sundays, what times do you want that to happen? So I can say on Sundays, maybe just on from five o'clock or two o'clock, whatever the case might be, you can choose which is your opening hours. And you've got all of these different ones. At the moment, you cannot disable the timing, but I'm sure it's something that will come in future. So once you've done that, you're going to click to ticket area. And now you can choose whether you want an email to be sent to the customer during the time of the ticket. So we can enable or disable. Because you can see sometimes people would like to have it emailed to them, the whole uh, chat that has happened. And that is again your opening message of the ticket, your closing message of the ticket. And again, you can register a question. So for an example, again, because this is a ticket, you can ask there, have you already opened another ticket? Something like that. And you can say, OK. And maybe you can ask another question there, whatever the case might be. I'm just going to leave it at one for now. So you can see we filled in all of this information. All we need to do now is go and click on save. Let me just enable the sent email and we're going to click save. And now you can see it's all been set up. It told saved email. So that is basically how you will configure your department. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in another. Hi, this is Jackie from the Build It All team. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to register a group. First, you need to make sure that you are working with the right company by looking under the home text right here. If it's not the right company, you can always go and click on change company. Then on the left, you're going to scroll down until you get to the people icon right here. And here you can already see that I've got a group registered. You can edit the group by clicking on the pencil. You can enable and disable the group by doing that. You can also use the trash can to delete the group or you can configure it. Now for this example, we're just going to click on the trash can just to delete the group. 
And okay, now you might wonder what is the difference between a group and a department? Let me give you an example. In this case, we have a sales department that we've created. But within a sales department, we might have different groups. And as an example, one group might work with just the chats, where another group works only with tickets. And you can set that, uh, that up according to your, referen or to your preferences. So let's start by clicking on register a new group. So we're going to give it a name. So let's say this is a chat group. I'm just going to write chat group to make it easier. This group works with just the chats. And like I said, you can do it in different kinds of ways. I'm just using this as an example. We're going to click on save. Now all the attendance that has been registered is going to be here at the bottom. And you need to choose which of these attendants you're going to add to those specific group. So in this case, I'm going to add this person to the group. Now you can see the person has been added. You can also take them away from the group. Or you can just add multiple attendants if you've got more registered. Now we're going to go to the manage group access. Now under this area is there one important thing that you need to remember. If you already have a lot of attendants uh, that you've added, you need to notify the attendants who are part of the group to log out and log in for all the changes to be applied. So now you can see we've got a chat, we've got ticket, and we've got controllers. Controllers is basically for the company, the department, the group, the agents, and integration. You might have another group for controllers. So you could maybe have a chat group, you might have a ticket group, and you might have a controller group. So in this case, because this is a chat group, we are going to give them access to all these different kinds of things right here under the chat. And for the ticket area, we are going to disable it. So if you want more information on each of these, just read these little lines underneath it, and that will give you more information. And again, now for the controllers, we're just going to leave that area out because that is it's complying to the company, to a department, or to the agents. So once you've set all of that up, all you need to do is click on Save. So now basically all you've done now is you have done the group configuration. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in another. Hi, this is Jackie from the Bulletal team. In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to register an attendant. First, you need to make sure that you are working with the right company by looking under the home text. If it's not the right company, you can just click on change company. Now on the left hand side, you're going to scroll until you see the single person icon and you will basically have two options. One is to register a new attendant or to click on the list of attendants to see the, uh, the existing attendants there. But we're going to click on add new attendant. So now we need to enter the email address. I'm just going to write here test at gmail.com. I'm going to click check. We're going to give it a name, Joe, and we are going to give it a password. And we're going to click register. And now you can see that we have added the attendant. And we need to make sure that we are looking at the information if it's all correct. Name is correct, email. The groups that it's part of is part of a chat group and it's part of sales. So you can click on update and say it is correct. All of us in the right area and you're going to click save. Once that is done, to see if all of it has worked, you're going to go back to the attendees list. Click on list of attendees and you will see them added right here. You can see we've got Joe added and that is how you would add a new attendant to your help desk. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in another. Hi, this is Jackie from the Bull Little team. In this tutorial, we will look at the integration part of help desk. You can integrate help desk with your own sites or you can integrate it with your client sites. They do not need to have a BA account for the help desk to work. First, you need to make sure that you are working with the right company. Right here at the top, you'll see home. Underneath it, it says, Welcome to Web Agency. That is the client that we're working with. If it's not the right one, you're just going to click on Change Company. Otherwise, we're going to go to the left, scroll down to this icon here. We're going to click on that because that is for integrations. And then right here at the top, we're going to start with Released Domains. Now, to understand Released Domains is... If your client uh, is any other client outside of Bull at all, 
um, you will need to add the domain name right here at the top. Now, I cannot add the one that we are working with at the moment, which is this site, Jackie DeClerc at helpdesk.cheetahbuilderall.com because this specific site is already full under Builderall and it's already been released. If I'm going to copy the text right there and add it right into the site here, it is not going to work because it's already been released and it's going to give you that message it's already released because it is to domain Builderall.com. But any other site that you have created inside of Cheetah that you have published and is already an active domain that you will need to go and add under the enter a domain otherwise your site is not going to work now if we scroll down onto the external integration in this part you can choose what is going to be shown on your client site is it going to be the chat as well as the ticket function or is it going to be only chat or only ticket you would be able to choose between those two options basically all or chat or ticket and then once you've done that you're going to copy the script and that is the script that will need to be added to their site's scripting section now when we have created the web agency page pages we've already added this code but i'm just going to remind you where it is done inside of cheetah which actually happens automatically so if i go to my cheetah site and i go to the script settings here you will see that we've already added that code right here at the top. So you don't need to do it again if you do it initially setting up a company. But if it is not, you will need to go grab it. Even if you are going to change it to just chat, then you have to copy it and go change it in your Cheetah if you are only going to have the chat function and not all. So that is important part to remember. When we scroll up a little bit more, this is the interaction with customers, the configuration of how the customer is going to see it. You can see that we are giving them a logout redirect. So basically, once they've logged a ticket, they will be redirected to the login area again if they want to log in and see the response on their ticket. That is basically what it looks like. So if I have to copy that and go to incognito and show you what it looks like, it's going to give you the login screen after they have actually made a ticket. So if they want to go and check up on their ticket, they can do that by just logging in. So that is that one for them. And then we've got anonymous access. The customer will not have access to the tickets as they will not be shown. Now, the way this works is if they want to be anonymous and register without an email or a name, then they will not have access to the ticket area. So at the moment, I've enabled that, which means is because it's enabled, I'm going to give them this message and says that they will be denied uh, to log a ticket. They will only have live. But we're going to look at that once we are going to, to test the site. And then we've got the customer profile. If activated, the customer can edit their profile name and password. So I'm just going to leave all of this as enabled. We're going to scroll down. And this is now the area for the attendance that needs to log uh, check the tickets or the customer support and this is where their login details is going to be you can copy this and add it to a place on your cheetah site if you want to if i have it right here you can have another bar somewhere for support to log in but just put it in a place where the client is not going to see because you don't want them to be to get confused so let's just go back and then you can also say activate pro activate profile attendant so they can also edit and change and that is the integration part of it. So let's go take a look at what it looks like when it is live. So here we are on the site. You can see it automatically adds this little button. At the moment, you cannot edit the color of these buttons or the look and feel of it. But if you click on it, you'll see it gives you the option to chat and a ticket. So I'm just going to go out of the site because I've gone into the site before. And I'm going to go into incognito so that we can test it and see what it looks like. Now, as a customer coming to your site the very first time, this is what they're going to see. And then they will see the button so that they can choose to click on chat. And it's going to ask them to register. So there at the bottom, you can say, I don't want to identify myself. If I click on that, it's going to give a message to say, by selecting this option, you will not be able to create tickets. So let's just go back. And that is just going to give you the idea. So now we are going to, let me just go out and uh, chat again. 
So now we are going to register and I'm just going to say Joni. Joni at gmail.com and I'm giving a password and I'm going to leave it in the English and I agree with the terms and condition and I'm going to register. So now you're going to see we're going to have to accept all of these cookies and then they're going to choose the client's going to choose which department she wants to work with and you're going to click next and then it says the partner please give us your contact number just in case the chat closes so during the other training that we've done we've created these little bubbles that will pop up with questions prior to the uh, chat that's going to happen and this was one of them so they need to give their number just in case the chat closes and we're going to click create new chat and now it's going to say they answered the question she's given the chat and it tells her welcome now all of these are the things that will be set up during your process in creating your departments as well as your attendance and the questions and now they can start typing in the problem what packages are available now obviously because you already have a chat support waiting for all of these things they will respond to it because obviously i can't do it during the test phase but they will respond to your tickets but this is basically how it works so if i go just click on back this is what the client is going to see and what will happen they can see that it's still in queue now they can also click on message and here they're going to see all the rest of the information and they can click on plus they can select the department and click next and so you can wait will soon assist you type your ticket description have you already opened another ticket so you can see that they've got multiple things that they can do inside of your area and once they're done they can just click on the top and they can either edit their profile or exit and when they exit they're going to go back to the login screen so that's basically how you would integrate it and what the customer will look at so let's take a look at what the integration would look like for the attendance. So let's go grab the login for the attendance and I'm also gonna open that up in incognito. So the attendance, when they get to do their job for the day, they're gonna to go to the login screen and this is what they're going to see. And now they need to enter their details. And they're gonna click enter. they're going to accept everything as well and now they are inside of the dashboard all they need to do now is go look at the ticket area right here that's opening up for them to see what has been allocated to the chat now obviously because it hasn't been live you can see it still shows that it's in queue and it's still happening there is Joni but they will see it happening because once they logged in all of it becomes live and they would be answer, able to answer that and that is how the integration work i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and i'll see you in another hi this is jackie from the builder team in this tutorial we're going to look at how attendees can access a ticket or chat when they log in so on the left hand side i'm just going to go to the department area just to show you the people that has got access to certain things on the department so if i scroll down and i go click on the sales department and we're going to look at manage assistance we can see that Manny, Mandy and Joe and Jackie is all part of this department, but not all of them has got the right to do certain things on, on inside of these chat groups. So it depends on what their access is, what they would be able to do with the ticket. So I'm going to pretend that I'm Mandy and we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to go back to the integrations area so I can just grab the URL that we are needing to access the attendance access. And then I'm going to go into incognito because that is always the best way to go around when we're testing. And I'm going to paste it in. So I am Mandy and I'm going to log into the account. It's my time to work. So I'm going to type in Mandy at gmail.com and a password and we're going to enter. And this is what she's going to see. Now, obviously, when a chat is live and it is in within her department and her scope of work, it's going to show up. But let's go click on the chat area 
and she will be seeing exactly the chat that is taking place, whether it's in queue, in progress, whatever the case might be. So let's say that she choose to grab PIT. She wants to attend to PIT. All she needs to do is click on take. And now you can see that says you are not allowed to catch chats. Contact to your administrator, which means is that for this specific, uh, specific um, ticket, she won't be able to answer the questions here because she's probably being restricted in another area where she's not been added. But if she was not restricted, she would be able to take that one and answer the question accordingly. So I'm going to now log in as another person. So let me type in as this other person. So now this support person is logging in and they have got all the rights. They can do chats, they can do tickets. So they're going to click on this company because they are also getting access, got access to that specific company. They're going to go click on the um, chat support, click on chats. And now she can see that there's one person in queue and one in progress, which means maybe another attendee is busy working on that one and they want to take this one. So they're going to click on take. And now they are live. So all they need to do is start typing. Hello there. Apologies for the delay. And then you can see it starts showing up and the conversation is going to go on. Now they can choose multiple things to do right here. They can copy some of it, transfer it to somewhere else, depending on the rights that they have within the account that they've created on the right. And that is basically how they will pick up a chat. And the same rule applies for a ticket. So if a ticket was generated, unfortunately in this case we haven't got enough samples to deal with, but if a ticket was generated, it would have the option right there to click on the ticket and handle that ticket by themselves. So let's go just go back to the chats area. And I'm just going to click on all chats and it shows in progress. And you can see now it shows that it, the chat is in progress. And this is basically how it works. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in another.